Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Dark Metal video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the second stage of the second edition of movie or movie edition two uh, red zone stage. So this is the Dr. Wheelow red zone stage uh, and it consists of three phases. So we have the first phase which is against Dr. Wheelow and the like I don't know, mutated Cybermen or whatever they are. We then have the second phase, which is against Brainwashed Piccolo. And then we have the final phase, which is against good old Dr. Wheelow himself. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Honestly speaking, you know, just talking uh, kind of like the general tactics, uh, I think a lot of the times, okay, well, this is going to be a no item run, but I think a lot of the times, you know, like, Red zones that start out weaker, you know, everyone kind of disrespects them, like, whoa, you know, this one's not as hard as the previous one. The thing is, is for someone out there, especially a new player, this is a hard stage. And they're going to come try it, they're going to get their ass kicked, and then they're going to be like, wow, that was really tough. So, it's respectfully difficult to a certain degree. So anyway, in these uh, phases, so in this first phase, immediately, you know, we're mainly focusing potentially on AOE attacks. Ideally, at this point, you want units that have guard or evasion because there's multiple typings here. And you're going to have to deal with that. So having units with guard is going to rapidly diminish the amount of damage you take, uh, which is going to help out. AOE attacks also help out, but generally speaking, don't build into AOE. The first phase is usually the weakest, so building into AOE is just going to gimp you for later on because usually AOE attackers don't deal mega 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 you know damage outside of the AoE situation in the second phase against Piccolo Piccolo is able to be stunned he's immune to ceiling attack lowering defense lowering he does raise his attack but he's immune to being stunned and then in the final phase against Dr. Wheeler he's immune to stunning ceiling uh, and he lowers and the attack lowering defense lowering and he also raises his defense by 30% uh, when he supers. He also does like very moderately difficult um, AOE attacks to take but it's nothing too crazy. Now in terms of the, like just handling this event so obviously you don't have to go for the no item run uh, it's just with some of the easier ones I like to do the no item run right out the gate because why not uh, but generally speaking you don't have to do the no item run but I would say this one's not too difficult. So if you want to try this one, try it and item run, just try it and you know, give it a go and see how it is. Uh, I don't think it's a problem. I think generally speaking, you'll have a pretty good time here. But yeah, I will say for me, like looking at, you know, looking at this, I would say event in general, I do feel, um, you know, I do feel like having a red zone that starts a bit weaker is a good thing. Um, I know a lot of people will say like, well, you know, it's not so great because, but I think for me, it's definitely something that's a lot more fun. Having a build up, having stages that players of various you know, abilities can do. The first stage, a lot of players are gonna be able to do. The, this stage will be a bit harder for a lot of players and then the next stage will be even tougher. So. I think for me that's definitely something that's uh, really good to kind of have to have this like um, you know situation where you have scaling difficulties now in terms of team build as I mentioned already you're gonna want God but you're also going to want to bring a little bit of utility as much as the last phase of Dr. Wheeler uh, doesn't allow you to stun or seal you can still stun all of the minions dealing up to it so you can stun each of these aoe minions outside of dr wheelow you can also stun piccolo in the next phase so having stuns or at least one or two stuns could set you up for some easy victory later on now speaking specifically of teams uh, so we're going to be rocking a very interesting team here uh, in that we're rocking earthbred fighters so i mean earthbred fighters thematically it allowed me to kind of hit a couple units Dr. Wheeler was a weird movie, it was like kind of in that phase of in between uh, Dragon Ball 
and the Saiyan Saga, or like kind of roughly around there, um, like that time period. So it was a little bit difficult to build a team specifically relating to that, but I wanted to really try and just kind of have a little bit of fun with it. So we went Earthbred Fighters. Now, as you know, Tech Goku, World Tournament Goku as he's known, is an awesome unit. He's really, really, really top notch. He's really good, super duper strong. Uh, a unit that's very powerful. Yeah, has a lot of stuff going right for him. Just a very effective unit, a very efficient unit. And ultimately a unit that I think just continues to still look very good. Um, I know this isn't even the hardest event he can take on, but the fact that he is still really solid in most events shows to how well he is aging. Um, alongside that, we have his counterpart from the same celebration, the Int Piccolo. Again, Int Piccolo also a unit that's doing pretty well in the aging perspective. Uh, defensively, he probably falls off a little bit more than Goku, although he can surprisingly get very far with his raw defense. But his damage is really where he's going to shine. Here we're going to see some great you know, usability out of him, you know, in terms of like his overall performance. But really the damage is where we're going to get a lot of kickback with him. You know, we're getting the giant form, we're getting his good burst damage. We also even have the usability of his AoE active skill uh, in the first phase, which means overall that I think he's in a really good position, personally speaking. So, so far so good. Everyone looking pretty solid. I think the team is looking really good. Next, that we kind of need to focus on, obviously being some of the, you know, floaters. So, obviously I've got Revive Goku, Super Saiyan Goku, Cooler Movie Goku as everyone calls him, Revive Goku, whichever way you want to go, Carnival Revive Goku. This guy has so much utility for me as just a walking revive. And it sounds really bad to say, but the fact that he has such an easy revive to activate really benefits a lot of units. Well, Tormen Goku, uh, this Goku, even units like Martian Buu and that can all benefit from Goku's very easily accessible revive. So for me, that Go it's one of the big benefits of Goku. And it sounds really weird to say, uh, like, oh, I'm bringing someone to revive, but I, I am. I, I'm bringing him to revive and it's working really really well so I am really happy with that I think he does a great job I think he's really solid and I do actually really enjoy using him uh, plus he can still hold his own like post revive he still has God he still has a lot of really strong capabilities still has decent defense um, he still has very solid uh, active skill with the interruption so he still has plenty of great stuff um, as a unit. So definitely a good looking unit for me. And because he suits the Earthbred Fighters team so well, by triggering the revive of the Gokus, uh, I think he's a lot of fun in that way. But yeah, so then we have the... So who do we have next? Then we have Strength Bomber. Strength Bomber, you know, fantastic unit. She's got her active skill. She's got her, um, you know, general great performance, the double turn support, the scaling damage reduction, very solid defense, the orb changing, the solid offense, everything that you basically want from a unit, Bulma has. And it makes it one of the best supports in the game, but still keeps her to be relatively strong as well. Overall, is a very well aging unit. Then we have the strength Krillin, a great floating unit that support, that world tournament capability in terms of support, all very solid, and everything else is kind of coming together quite nicely uh, while using him. So I do really like him, I think he encompasses the team really well, and he puts everything together quite nicely. And then finally we have an easy A in Turkule. Uh, in Turkule, great unit, a uh, great tank, tanky unit, a very strong tanky unit, um, yeah, honestly, a really good unit to use. Uh, very solid, very powerful. Not a big offensive unit, but realistically just a reliable floating tank. And if we get into trouble, if we get low on health, then he becomes an even better tank because he can have a scaling damage reduction. Uh, he'll tank really, really well. 
The only thing is outside of his tanking, we're not getting a lot from him. But for now, for this team, for how everything is functioning here, uh, that's good enough for me. Uh, I don't think it's a big problem. But yeah, that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. It's always greatly appreciated. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. So until then, take care, stay safe, and uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next video. So take care, stay safe, and let me know what team builds you used. Bye.